Hey everybody, welcome to Tales Off the Hollow Tables. Uh, I don't have a funny tagline for today because I'm not going to lie to you. I started pre-gaming a little bit early. Um, I'm here with Rymus One, who um, I guess you're not really in the content creator sphere right now. Not. Um, but from what I understand, early on in the game, you were... I don't want to say that you were in the sphere, but like more... I don't know the best way to, to put it. Um, but the people who are the bigger content creators now, you were you were part of that 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 community and, and talking to those people. Um, and right now you're part of one of the guilds who's probably, and correct me if I'm wrong, highest in the efficiency rating for like stars for, for ROTE. Yeah, that's yeah, that's correct. So um been around playing this game since all the way back in April of 2016. Uh, which is a very long time to play a phone game. Uh, many of many of the people who follow you have also been playing that long. Uh, early on, did a lot of videos with Cubs fan Han back when he was doing his ratings every month on best tier tunes back when Thrawn was the best tune in the game, uh, most versatile tune in the game. I still die on that hill that Thrawn is one of my favorite plug and play characters Absolutely. to this day. Um, use him in a ship all the time. So I've uh, been around a while, uh, done a lot of work with our guild uh, and our alliance to kind of really figure out how to make our TV stars maximize through a lot of spreadsheets, a lot of time sitting down with my TV uh, lead, Slanny, and uh, really just figuring it out, uh, figuring out best course of action, balancing how much deploy here versus how many combats we can expect there doing a whole lot of math. Um, and really that's come to how I've actually met you, sir, uh, through a lot of your math work. Uh, I hate do, sir, but sure. You do a, you do a service to the Reddit community and the, in the community of this game as a whole. So, uh, just interested in hanging out, drinking some bourbon and, uh, catching up. Yeah, so I, I want to talk about that in a second, but the but the first thing that I wanted to point out is uh, what we're drinking tonight. So I got home, we were at a brewery, I told you my wife and I went to a brewery nearby, we've had a few drinks, um, and I had said to you, hey, I might, I might be a little bit sloppier than usual in the beginning. Um, that's okay, that's what this is all about. Um, I came home, and I realized I don't have any good bourbons or whiskeys anymore, I, I killed them all, so... What I did find in my basement is um, this bottle of rum uh, that mm. I think I opened up on a uh, on an early, early, early video that I did. It's from Puerto Rico. It's I think I bought it about 10 years ago for my best friend's wedding. Um, so I don't drink this often. And I figured that that I'd be pouring that tonight. Uh, so that's where we're going. Uh, what, gotcha. what do we got on tap today? So I was able to snag a bottle of Blanton's straight bourbon whiskey. This one, if anyone follows it, this happens to be the letter N. Uh, Blanton's does a thing where every topper is a different racehorse. You collect them all, and then you can mount them on a barrel stave and spell the word Blanton's, and it starts from starting line to winning horses. So uh, kind of hard to find. Uh, just around these parts if you want to get it for retail and not spend an arm and a leg. So I'm actually cracking the seal on this for the first time. So we're going to see how it goes. Nice. I, I think I've heard of that. I, one of my coworkers, her, um, her husband is big into scotches and she was explaining something to me about like letters and, and that sounds familiar. So I'll have to check in with her tomorrow. That would be this little guy here. So everyone has a little letter by the back foot. Uh, have three letters now, but I have yet to even try this bourbon. So we're going to give it a go. Cheers, man. Normally I don't pour on stream, but I figured yeah, this is a special occasion. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, I used to be a rum guy and now I'm more of a scotch guy. So that's, mm. that's hit me a little different than it normally does. How, how is, how's the bourbon? quite smooth only 93 proof but it uh goes down pretty easy so we'll see how long this lasts and see how long this stream lasts you'll you'll have to uh message me on discord after because 
I'm more of a scotch guy. My wife loves bourbons, so mm -hmm. I'd be interested in looking at some of these to maybe grab for her. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's more her world, but you know, it, it, we're we're cheap wine kind of people. We're not. We don't need to spend a ton of money. Um, I hear you. But but to get back into our history, um, correct me if I'm wrong. I was doing like Galactic Chase Map. You had reached out to me on Discord, maybe. I don't know, one, two years ago. Um, and we were talking about different things and and kind of like very cursory and on the surface. And one thing went led to another. And it ended up that we collaborated on a bunch of spreadsheets. You made a lot of my spreadsheets look a lot prettier than they ever have in the past. Um, I'm not great with Excel. I'm not great with Google. I, I get around, um, but it's very like rudimentary and 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 finding like the longest route to getting to things. And you would come in and say like, wait, no, you just do this function and that's easy. And this is much quicker that way. So you've made things look a lot prettier for me over the years. Um, and I, I definitely appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I'm an engineer by trade. So math and spreadsheets are pretty much what I do every day for work. So it just kind of goes with the territory and finding the fastest and easiest and simplest way to do something is pretty much what engineering is. So see, I just take band-aids and I go, Hmm, let me find the, the five different equations I can use to make the one equation that you find later on. Um, so we did that for a few galactic chases. We have that big galactic chase, uh, uh, sheet now that I use, and I just kind of copy and paste it every time and change it around. Um, but going back to your efficiency with your guild, I, I is it 39 or are you guys doing 40 stars now? We are getting 39. So uh, 40 is Zeppo. 40 will be Zeppo. Uh, we fell just barely short of getting, um, uh, Zeppo. We had 28 wins. Uh, we now have 41 uh, Jedi cows ready to go. So with that, we should have a nice efficiency rating. And at that point, based on the math that we did, uh, along with my TV officer slam, it's pretty much a deploy finish uh, to get to 40 stars. And we're going to do it, really wanted to do it that last round. It would have been under 540 mil. We would have gotten it done. Uh, but this time with some just natural growth, uh, it seems like we go up in GP as a guild, like yeah. millions every single time we go through TB. Uh, but yeah, we'll be, we should be right around 542, 543 by the time we do this next TB here. This is what embarrasses me because I'm, I'm pulling up my game right now, but I think we're at like 562 and I always, I always pride myself on being efficient. And um, I've always prided my guild on being efficient and you guys are like 20, 25 million below us and you're hitting two extra stars. Um, we're, we're gunning for Zepho this time too. We'll see what happens at 38. Uh, the last time we talked like six months ago, um, I completely redid our TV strategy. Um, not to the same, not to the same path that you guys take because our platoons have been completely different. Um, but trying to keep that in mind. And, and I haven't enacted it yet. Uh, shit, I, this is why I can't do these things drunk because I don't remember where anything is. Uh, so we're 564 and we're doing 37. We'll hit 38. Um, I, I think it's easier now in 2024 because we're seeing so many characters come out. Yeah. Right. In, in like 2022, 2021, if we actually track those, we would get like one or two characters a month. And right now it seems like every two weeks we're hitting something different. Um, how is that affecting you guys in terms of like gearing and, and being able to keep on top of all of it? So with a game this big, with so many different areas that guilds can focus on, uh, we kind of had to pick which one wanted to be our primary. And for us as a guild, something that we knew we could solve, knew we could figure it out, we chose TB and Raid as our two. Um, TWs, it's not that we ignore TW. We actually have probably somewhere in like the 70 to 75% win rate with TWs, but we're not going to go super hard core try and and work through all of that strategy and it really made it easy that we had the entire guild review i think we did a vote on it at one point in time like a straw poll 
and everyone was on board for TB. And with that included three different rounds of potluck characters. So as we were working our way up the planets, we kind of worked out, all right, now this one is going to be one that we're going to have to take to Relic 8. And you have it at Relic 5. You're arguably the closest Jawa scavenger owner in the guild. So it makes sense for you to take this one up. And ultimately, when we got to the, the current strategy we're at, we broke everyone down, put 150 tunes at Relic 9 in it. We did a column of tunes that everybody would be happy to take, like the GLs, like the gases, uh, put ones in the middle that would be more niche, like the Afras and the, the Grand Inquisitors. And then we just put all of the junk on the far side. That was the I'm a gun dies. That was the Kit Fistos. That was the Kiras. It was all of those. That's those my Hawks Rebel Soldier, man. I, I've got yeah. one. I get it. Um, so for, for people, yeah, go, go, ahead. go ahead, finish your thought. Well, for And with that, that got us every Relic 9 tune that we needed up through tier five of Light Side and Dark Side and mixed Hoth, which is planet number six. So with that and with the way this TB is structured, there's so much value put into platoons, decent value put into ship combat wins, and regular combats are worth it in an aggregate of 50 people all succeeding at it, but individually compared to the other TB raids, it's just not it's just not worth the time to invest in the tunes for combats only for the investment in combats outside of a few key ones like java has a mission at every tier level afra has a couple of missions that are keyed to her only a couple of the other ones and obviously the the seer uh jedi cal battle as well that was definitely going into rot um early on uh, a big learning curve for our guild where you're going from light side territory battles and anyone listening who maybe is a newer player and doesn't understand that dynamic uh, back then you wanted wins like I was pushing I think 71 waves was the max and I was pushing 68 to 70 pretty much every time and, and every once in a while you'd get lucky on that gas mission and it would yep. work out and you'd hit <laughs> yeah. 71 um, but you needed those because they were so important. And then when we went to ROTE, a lot of our guild, it took like six months to get them conditioned to it's okay to platoon. It's okay that your combats are not as high as they used to be. This is way more important because it, it's, it costs us so much more. It gives us so much more than, than the, the wins do. And, and I, I don't hate the change. Mm-hmm. Because it, it does relieve some of the stress that light side uh, geo really gave to me. Anytime it came up, I was like, man, this sucks. I hate this so much. It, it is an interesting evolution. And with them adding new planets like Zepho, like the rumor that there's going to eventually be a Mandalore planet, because they've been hinting at it for a while and the ways that that would impact the game and just give certain phases of battle based on your strategy and your delay tactic versus going straight for three stars, there's going to be overkill GP. And probably our biggest stress point for a while was there's a couple of days where we have 40, 50 million GP that we just can't deploy because it would push us over a star and actually cost us in the long run. Once planets like Zepho are added and possibly Mandalore or however they evolve this ROTE, on their current plan, it's going to give us a place to dump all that excess. So we really can maximize and have a place to stick it. Um, with the delay in platoons on Zepho to the final day, pretty much winning like 23 ship battles and deploying like we normally do with our overfill will get us that extra star plus the cryos plus everything else. So it, it really, we've spent a lot of time theory crafting and if we get to our next GP threshold, we are going to completely blow up the strategy and switch to a day two, two to three star geos in one day. And that's really where we need to go to get to the 41s, 42s, 43 star finishes. If the day two dark side mission, uh, the fleet mission were, it's not unbeatable. I I've seen it beaten before, but it's basically a crapshoot. Yeah. You know, I think we would already be doing max on both day one, day two, and then we'd have to completely reassign our strategy and do something differently. 
Um, I'm kind of thankful that we don't have to yet because then I'm the person that has to think of and figure that shit out. But going back to your point on the platoons, I want to give a shout out to my um, my operations guy, Quinton, who's probably going to be listening to this at some point. But uh, I used to do TV on my own and I do everything. And he kind of came in and he's like his whole job is just figuring out the operations. Um, so I figure out the star battles and figure out what needs to be done. And he's the one that does exactly what you said, like he's putting things into those three columns and saying, Hey, you're closest, like do that. It makes more sense. Um, and he's usually yelling at me because I'm anytime we're deficient, he'll go, Oh, we're deficient on an R9 this. And I'm like, no, we're not. I got it. And, uh, he's gotten to a point where he's like, you need to stop. You need to focus on your own roster. We have 50 other people like calm the hell down. Um, so I want to give him a shout out to me, shout out to him because he, he, um, he makes my life a lot easier. Yeah. You know, um, and, and the reason that I want to do that is, is anyone who listening who is not in our position in a 540, 560 guild who's starting ROT and thinking about having just a territory battles officer, it largely is important to focus on platoons and it is a guild effort. And you can't just say, oh, hey, figure it out. You yeah. do need somebody that says, hey, this is what we need to do. Um, some guilds choose to say, you have to do this. Um, I don't know if your guild is in the same boat as ours, but we basically, every TB, I, I release a, um, a message that says, hey, this is where we're at. This is what we need to do. We need volunteers. And as long as I'm super communicable with people, they, they volunteer. They reach out to us. They yeah. say, hey, what do you need done? Um, and it has to happen or you're not going to succeed. Where we're at now and uh, not to plug any specific uh, aids that are out there. There's a bunch out there. They all do great work. I'm not uh, sponsored by anybody, but gotcha. feel free. It's... Um, Hot, Hot Utils is an unbelievable resource for platoons and TW defenses. Um, everybody has their assignments. Our TB officer, Slan, he just built out all of the templates for every day. You hit a button in Discord, it tells you exactly which tune to place in which zone. Everyone does their thing in the first four to six hours. We've got all the max benefits for platoons. Occasionally, there's going to be a couple here and there. Someone's traveling or we need to cover, on, especially on early days. Um, it gets a little tougher to cover those R9s in the finals. But really, at the end of the day, we as a guild have all kind of rallied around that. You get your platoons done as quickly as possible, and then we can really fine tune the plan on when we lock this zone versus push this zone and really manage it. It makes everything go a lot smoother um, from the management side. I was um, in our alliance. I was the guild leader of TNR Uprising for seven years straight, and eventually I wanted to take a step back out of that role and really just do the things I like doing, which is really the the math and the TB and kind of helping with theory crafting and strategy and finding different teams that work in the different combats and jumping over to Rising Phoenix, where I am now as one of our, our other guilds, really just allowed us to focus on just that because there's so many competing interests for guild leaders out there that uh, I think the general player doesn't realize the amount of time that the officers and the leaders put in every single day and that one or two people who are busy they're traveling they they miss that platoon it takes hours of officers to track it all down figure it out keep things moving forward um it it, it really does add a whole nother effort to just playing this game for fun when you're trying to keep 49 other people all rowing in the same direction. Was it you that I had messaged on Discord uh, a few days last TB, like that last day? Uh, it might have been someone else, but it probably was you. I was I was saying that I had I had messaged somebody um, on day six because people weren't getting their deploys in, and and the idea of your thirty second deploy costs me an hour. Was yep. that you and yep. I venting? Yeah, yeah, it was. It's just. Uh, you know, we have guys who they do, they travel, they go away almost everybody in my guild. We have, we have men, we have women 
Um, but everybody's in their 30s to 50s. They all have kids. They all have like jobs. And I get it. And and they post and say, hey, I'm going to be on vacation or I'm going to be here. And uh, I actually had a guy last week. He was like, oh, I'm, I'm in line at an amusement park with my kids. And I had said, but I'll get it done in an hour. And I had said to him, I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Just deploy. Like, I don't care about the comments. Yeah. They're meaningless. Just deploy. It'll take you 30 seconds. Go enjoy your time. Yep. With your kids. But if you take your 30 seconds, I don't have to sit in front of my computer for an hour wondering if something is going to get done. Exactly. And that's the beauty of Rise of the Empire is that you, yes, the combats work if you have 50 people doing them, mm -hmm. but one or two people going on vacation is not a big deal. No. Just, just deploy, just do your operations. It takes 45 seconds, go to the bathroom get it done and then go enjoy your time. Right. Yep. And then I get to enjoy my time too. hundred percent. Yeah. It, it does take a lot of stress off of it. And I know you've done a ton of work with this front and with the, the new discord channel taking shape that TB, these are the tunes that if they're not part of your platoons, throw this team together, put it up, pick your first target, hit auto, and you're going to win 90% of your battles take all the stress away from it and just focus on, on getting some of those easy wins. Even now, probably the easiest battle in this whole ROTE is planet six middle Hoth fleet battle. It is almost like a freeze burn uh, benefit when all platoons are filled and you just put Levi or any other ship in there that you're not using elsewhere and as long as you have some amount of cleanse to get rid of the the freeze dots, the other ships just kill themselves. And you do not have to do a single thing to win that battle. It will do it on auto for you. And I know that's music to your ears. But... I, I love it. I really love it. You know, and that's that's my whole thing. So that CG just released that survey, right? Like the item survey. And they're like, which items are important to you? And what they meant was like, which items can we sell to you? Yeah. Um, and at the very end, they were like, what would make you quit this game? And, you know, obviously you get when you see on Reddit, people like post their things and they think they're funny and they go, LOL. I said, if this guy comes to the game or LOL, if you make me spend money. I always try to view things with like a real perspective of like me as a player. And what it comes down to is my time investment. It, it's a yep. phone game. I have never played a phone game for eight years. I play phone games for two months, three months, I get bored and then I'm done. Um, I already spend an hour, two hours, three hours a day doing this. Uh, if you increase my time amount in the game where I have to take away time from my wife, I quit. I'm done. She's more important than the game. Right now, I can do most things while I'm at work on auto. And yeah, I don't win every combat. Some combats I lose. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Um, but I can do it mostly on auto. I can do it mostly while she's in the shower. I can do it mostly while we're watching TV together. If there's something that I have to sit down for 20 minutes and like really focus on it, and, and that is in addition to the, tw the, the, the hour, the two hours, the three hours I'm already spending, that's when the game is too much for me. Yeah. So that's the point of finding these autos for me is saying I don't win every battle, but I win 85%, right? And, yep. and I want other people to learn that. And even then, you're still getting 75 plus waves done in ROTE, time in, time out, even without your full focus. Yeah. You're still outperforming, you know, 90% of the average player in, in the game with those sorts of records. And it, it really does make it easy. Um, you've been in this game a long time. Do you remember the level of stress that the original Challenge Rancor gave us when we are in inter most guilds are international? You've got players in Singapore, you have them in in Germany, you have them in California, New York, everywhere in between. To get everyone playing at the same time, sitting on their phone at the same time to get 2% per player, to get 50 people to work together, to beat one wave and then do it again. And figuring all of that out in 48 hours 
and kind of saying, we're going to do this immediate at launch for phase one, immediately into phase two, we're going to take a 12 hour break and we're going to come back and we're going to hit it with the, the Europeans at this time. It was unbelievably stressful and yes. probably one of my biggest highs in this entire game was that first cranker raid that we beat because it was 50 people all rowing in the same direction to get to that goal. And it felt great. And then three days later, we had to do it again. And it just killed it's you. Awful. And it got to the point when they made the changes, it wasn't as much of a community effort to beat it, but people could attack it in their own time and work their way through it. And it wasn't something that I had one player who still plays with us. He was getting up at 2.30 in the morning to contribute his four and a half percent and knock that out. And it was waking up and, and disrupting his day that even though it was my greatest high in this game was having that achievement of us tackling that huge feat all at once, that just about caused me to quit. That was, you know, did you play? So we're roughly the same age. Uh, I grew up in the MMO area. Did you play a lot of MMOs growing up? I, I did a lot of RPGs. Uh, yeah. I never really got into the MMO scene okay. myself. Um, it know a lot about them, know a lot of people in my friend group who, who do play them and play them to this day. It was one of those things that I just couldn't necessarily okay, with too. my work and my life. I couldn't guarantee that I could be online at 7 p.m. on a Friday night to go do this raid. This certain thing. And that's that's what it reminded me of. So I grew up in the MMOs and, and I was a big fan. And and when we talk about like right now we're on Zoom um, before we were talking on Discord. And I can talk about how we were on years ago. We were on Ventrilo and then we yeah. were on TeamSpeak and then we were on Mumbles and all of these different things, playing Star Wars Galaxies, playing World of Warcraft and doing these raids. I remember doing one WoW raid in Molten Core where one of our guys was in Amsterdam. He was like a 30-year-old guy living at home with his parents. And he was a really important to our raid. And he just went dead. And it turns out like the next morning, he was like, oh, my parents just disconnected the internet. They were pissed. I was up at three in the morning. But it was like nine at night for me. Um, that yeah. was that was MMO rating, and Crankor was very much MMO rating, and it and it's very exciting and it's very exhilarating, but not when it's a phone game. You know, when you're playing a phone game, especially when you have to deal with like, okay, I did my raid, now I either sit on the Crankor screen for the next forty five minutes, or I risk going to Discord. But if I risk going to Discord the game might refresh. Yep. So every minute I'm going between Discord and the game and it's just so frustrating. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was exhilarating in that in that aspect, but it just wasn't conducive to the type of game that this is. Exactly, exactly. And it it definitely created a lot of stress in the officers. And we had a lot of people that once we, we got there and we got it repeatable, a lot of people did walk away from the game because even though it became easier and the rework made it way better. And even now with the new raid structure, um, it once a week, you do your battles, you're done. It doesn't matter. You don't have to time it. It makes it more on your own schedule as opposed to things happening as a guild with still having guild goals uh, for everyone's participation had really kind of evolved that. And the crate dragon raid, I, I miss it. I like it better, even though we do better in the speeder bike raid as a guild. I miss the crate because I just, I liked working through it. It was less do exactly these attacks in this order with these mods to hit these stats. And you're going to get 2.7 mil with Leia. You're going to get 2.5 mil with this random team of Whoever, uh, like Han Ve and Piet. Veers, Han and, and, or Piet and Han. And then, you know, running random teams just to get the buffs that you need to maximize a score. It's kind of repetitive at this point. And I'm, I'm looking forward to this new one. Uh, even though I, I know right now my Gungans aren't nearly up to your level, uh, you would be, you would be ashamed 
but I we're getting there. Mine we're getting there. Beautiful. I'm excited. Last yesterday, I had messaged my TW officer Yak, and I was like, "Hey, man, uh, I'm using my Gungans. I don't give a shit. Like, fuck you. I don't care if I win or lose." And my wife and I, we went to go see Monkey Man in at AMC. Oh, nice. And I had to go to the bathroom before the movie started and, and TW just started and I saw like a separatist team. So I threw my Gungans in uh, and there, there are five except for Phalanx's G11 um, because of the way that the marquee yep. structure works. Um, and, and obviously one because they have so many separatist call outs. But I was watching all of the TM gain while I'm sitting there at the urinal, which is TMI, but I don't give a shit and I'm drunk. Um, and they just kept beating on my G11 phalanx. And he has so much protection that it did nothing to him. And yeah. it was beautiful. And I, I loved it. And I was like, this is this is great. Um, I'm super excited for them to all be. I'm super excited for Jar Jar to come out. That's that's a topic that I could spend like three, four, five hours on just because it is what it is. Um, but it's it, it's happening. The the point is it's happening day one. I, I can't wait for it. You linked me. I have the mask down here. You called my bluff that same day. Uh, You're like, hey, is it this mask? And I was like, Yes, it is. Um yeah. but I, I've got it under my desk. It's it's waiting. I uh my reading through all the different comments and I love the way they're doing these new tune releases with a Q and a immediately followed afterwards. It really does uh, feel well connected with things that you're thinking out and getting that clarity for those questions. But my favorite response, I think it was meathead put out, what is Jar Jar going to bring to this team? And just chaos. one word chaos. Perfect. So perfect. Keep- People were trying to like figure that out. They're like, what does that mean? Like, it's going to be crazy. I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be a debuff. Like that's, that's just a sly little hint to a buff or a debuff that's going to happen with him. Like he is literally going to bring chaos. I'm excited. Going back and I recently, in our age group, we had the originals that my parents introduced me to specifically my father and that has a special place in my heart. I feel like whatever generation is your Star Wars is your Star Wars. And we grew up kind of in between the original yeah, yeah. and the prequels. And I remember being so excited and now thinking back on it and seeing all the hate for the sequel trilogy makes me realize that I had that same opinion on the prequel. So I actually went back and watched them again. My just based on watching those movies and really I'm halfway through the second episode I didn't get them all done for you in time for this call. <laughs> but uh, I'm thinking Jar Jar is going to be an evasion machine. He's going to dodge everything. Everybody in that movie wanted to shoot him and they never could Good get him. Man. He's going to have an ability where he kicks a droid and then swings it around shooting blaster fire. I'm ready Love for it. it. And he's going to be almost impossible to hit. Uh, with possibly a taunt because everyone wants to shoot at him. And and I really think that that's how this is going to go um, and just provide that tank level defense for that. And then you got to choose. Do you shoot at Phalanx to avoid him him assisting and counterattacking like he will if you shoot one of his allies? Do you target Jar Jar? Like, how do you go about this and really make this feasible? Plus, the shield mechanic is just going to be such a game changer for that group where with your experience having played with some relic level tunes at this point where do you think they're going to fall in the tier do you think they're going to be in like the trench and afra situational benefit luxury but like do you think they're going to be kind of a niche thing like night sisters have become pretty good in certain aspects but have some weaknesses. Do you think they're going to have a place in that tier structure? So I, I have a lot of thoughts. My, my first thought here, I, before I even talk about that, I want to go back to the movies. Uh, Cause again, we're about the same age. I grew up, I was in like middle school, high school when Phantom Menace came out. Um, and I did, I did not super recently, but in the last couple of years, I rewatched the six movies. And I got to tell you, uh, when I watched the original trilogy, great movies, but they're campy as shit. Like people, they really are. People watch them and they have these rose tinted glasses, and I'm like, no, 
read the dialogue like it's really bad like they're good movies but they're also campy as shit yeah um when you watch the prequels um i actually i don't hate the prequels the only major critique i have is that phantom menace feels like two separate movies and that makes it feel like longer than it should be yeah um and i i go to the movies every weekend my wife and i we saw 55 movies in in the theaters last year which is a funny tim robinson joke that maybe three people will get um we we go all the time so when i say like hey this is it's not a bad movie it just feels like two separate things so it makes it feel longer than it should be um they're not awful yeah uh the sequel trilogy the first movie feels reductive but like safe and that's fine yes. The Last Jedi feels disjointed, which is my big problem with it. And its timeline is weird. Yeah. Um, Rise of Skywalker. Um, I think that's the name of the movie, right? Yep. It, it feels like they tried to save it. So it, it is what it is. But going to the Gungans and their team, as I'm talking to you, I'm like, hmm, maybe I need to remod Phalanx because <sighs> I think he's not that great a tank. Like, when you think about the shield generator and the shield generator having to survive, and his taunts only last for one turn, I'm like, maybe I, I need to take all of the speed off of him. Maybe I need him to be slow as hell so that yeah. that taunt matters. Um, we'll, we'll see when Jar Jar comes out. But I've always said, and I've said this for two, maybe three years now, and there are Reddit comments, there are dozens of Reddit comments of me saying this. I think Jar Jar is going to spread confusion. He's yep. obviously support. I've always said he was going to be support. And we know that. I think he's also going to be a tank, like you kind of mentioned. He won't have the tank tag, because I don't think you can have the support and the tank tag. But kind of how, like, Malik is a tank, but he also has that fuck you attack energy. Yep, yep. I think, I don't think he's going to have a taunt. But I do think he's going to just fall in front of damage. It's going to be I, that you're attacking someone else and he just, he gets in the way of it. And yeah. I, I have made dozens of comments in that regard. That's yeah. how I see him as like kind of an off tank as like an, oh shit, he got in the way. Yep. Um, in terms of tier list without talking about Jar Jar and not knowing what his, his kid is. Before Phalanx came out, I would have said he was an a, they were an A minus squad, like a really solid squad, um, but obviously some deficiencies. Phalanx doesn't give me a lot of confidence because of his taunts only lasting for one turn. Um, so I see them right now without Jar Jar as a B plus squad. So kind of like Padme right after her heyday. Yeah, um I gotcha. before jmk came out where she was a solid squad but not amazing yeah um, that's where i see them right now jar jar could change that for for galactic uh gac who knows with that at that tier level that pretty much relegates them to attack in most yes. of of the abilities and let you pick who you use them against as opposed to putting them on defense and the great thing about like I, I I am critical of the developers on this game because it's something that you don't play this game for eight years without loving everything about it. And I, I feel like there's a lot of vitriol and, and vigor against the developers that really isn't justified. If you play any other phone game, you're getting bombarded with ads and everything under the sun. This game has zero ads other than for packs that pop up periodically. There is no advertising whatsoever that gets in the way of you enjoying the game that is in every app on your phone nowadays. Everything is about the game and the gameplay. And I feel like they get a bad rap for that. I really do. But there are some, some things in that they, they make some decisions that really make it hard to see where they're going with things sometimes. And I, you, you spend a lot of time on Reddit. It can be a very dark corner of the internet. 
if you let people get to it. But I can think I people... tell you, I want to pause you for a second. I was again, so it's just at a brewery. I don't know if you've checked Reddit in the last couple hours, <laughs> but I was sitting there. My wife went to the bathroom. Um, we were drinking and we were playing like words with friends with each other because it was like the kind of bar where you play bar ga board games. Yeah. And you just like hang out. So we downloaded words with friends. She went to the bathroom. I'm hanging out. I checked Reddit. And there was a post about me um, and about my guild and, and, and TW and us, um, I guess, sandbagging some other guild as if we choose the matchmaking. Um, and it's just funny to read like comments where you're like, okay, I didn't do anything wrong, but like, fine, like, fuck you, I guess, or fuck me. I don't know. Um, in, in terms of it being a dark area, like everybody is they want to be accusatory all the time on, on that sub um, to, to me, to, to other creators, to, to CG, to, to anybody really. Um, it just, it, it, it is what it is. And it it's frustrating when we're not defending them, but when people come at it with, you know, and I wanted to actually bring this up. My, my stop arm has been slow. It has been horrible horrible drop rates for me that is just rng and yes. i'm pretty sure if i look at it yeah i had a couple of bad days and a couple of zero out of 12s or whatever the the sim amount is but i'm probably not going to be plus or minus more than two or three days out of a normal farming schedule i don't immediately think you know cg has looked at their millions of active players in this game and personally chose me to drop my drop rates on I'm not that important to make a company that has generated this global game to make them think I personally am getting screwed. What is the benefit in personally making it harder for one player in a game? Yeah. You know, and for me as being somebody who is, I, I say I'm free to play and I know this is going to get all the Reddit people up in arms because everyone <laughs> loves talking about, it's like being vegan. You love talking about being free to play. I have gotten enough joy out of this game over eight ish years. I was seriously sitting there when they did that extra life donate to the children's hospital thinking, you know, this is a good cause, but I'm free to play and I can't send $25 to help children. And I realize that in my head, like I'm just doing this for my own selfish reasons. So I've spent I've spent twenty five dollars to a donation to the children's hospital. And now that I think about it, I probably bought that Dooku pack for four ninety nine like Back. seven years so ago. So you are never free to play, you piece of shit. I I am. <laughs> I'm I am the part of the problem here. Part you know, of the problem. Well, it's funny. So it, we're, we're doing this on Sunday and uh, I, I did brunch with Eggnards earlier and there was a guy doing a roster review and he was like, oh, I'm free to play. And I looked at his roster and I was like, no, you absolutely bought a Lightspeed bundle. You, you a hundred, like I'm looking at your account and there's no way that this lined up this way, free to play. Yeah. And uh, afterwards he messaged me and he's like, oh, you caught me. Like I bought the light speed bundle. And I had said to him, I was like, listen, man, the reason I call you out is not because I want to like bash you as a spender. I spend money every once in a while. Um, the 40% crystal thing, my guild leader said, hey, do you want to trade? And I, I, I didn't really, I wasn't planning on it, but I was like, yeah, sure. I'll do it just because. Um and I, I'd said this guy, I was like, my, my point in calling you out wasn't to call you out. It was to say, like, spend money on whatever the hell you want. If this is what makes you happy, who the hell cares? Yep. Like, I, I, I don't give a shit if you spend $20 on a Lightspeed bundle versus on, like, I don't know, slime on HBO Go. Like, I, I, don't, I don't fucking care. Like, yeah. spend your money. That, that's and how it is it, the same same aspect of that too and i know my i love my wife dearly but she does not understand my bourbon collection and again i'm of the mindset that i want to have a backup to this bottle before i open this bottle because if i run out of this and i don't have you something, something i can dip to you need something so it is something that 
I'd argue that a little bit of spending on something that we all spend so much time playing every single day, every single week is not a bad investment if you are getting enjoyment out of it. Yeah. yeah. As long as you understand what your what your budget is, what your limits are, and you're not, you know, pulling from your rent fund or your grocery fund or your medicine fund to fund a gambling habit, which is what this all can turn into if you if you let it. Oh. Like that's that that's me in in a in a nutshell. Uh, and I was talking to um Pico Burrito actually two days ago. He does um I don't want to butcher their 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 podcast name, the Hollow Table News Network, I think. He does that with Celiac Sarah. And I was talking to him yes uh two days ago about how I my struggle with money is actually the opposite. I never spend money on myself. Yeah. Ever. Like my wife for Christmas will buy me boxers because I'm like, oh, these ones with holes in it, they're fine. Like I don't it's care. Fine. It's fine. Um you're always wearing comes, pants. No it doesn't one's gonna matter. See it. Exactly. <laughs> But like even with games, if I want to buy like a twenty dollar game, I'm like, well, do I really need this game? Like, uh, what do I do here? Um, and when I do buy something here, it, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, and I try to remind myself, like, you know what? I my bills are paid. I, I bought groceries this week. My mortgage is paid. My electricity is paid. I'm not rich. I don't make bank, but I make enough to pay my bills. Yeah. It's okay to spend up ten dollars on something that I I have fun on that I enjoy. Yeah. I don't need to feel bad. And there are with Reddit and 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 with other social networks. There's a lot of people that like want to make you feel bad for supporting something that you're enjoying. Uh, it again within within the limits of your budget confines. Be smart about it. It's the same thing for people who go to Vegas. I'm sure. Um, people who enjoy gambling and the high that you get and the the feeling of just one more time. I think we talked about this before. I'm a very, very, very bad Rocket League player, but I have 400 some hours into the game of Rocket League. And it's all because of that. Just one more time. Like, okay, five minute match, five minute match. I want to be done, but I'm not going to end on a losing streak. And then you have that perfect game where you just have that, perfect sequence of events or a good random teammate and both you play well together i'm like oh i can't i'm on a high now i gotta keep going i gotta keep going it's interesting that you mentioned that about uh about your your wife too because i'm the i'm in the same way i don't spend money on myself i really don't my bourbon habit aside i really don't spend money on myself so all of the tchotchkes and things that i have here are generally my wife so wood carved millennium falcon over here wood carved uh tie fighter and death star over here black series yeah, yeah. mando hammond over here fortunately the battery's dead so i can't pull this guy up but full body aluminum dark saber uh electrum sabers which makes some high quality lightsabers which is a purchase that rimus would never buy himself <laughs> but my wife realizing how much joy this brought me has. What, what type of blade is that is that uh it's an incredible. electrum okay. electrum saber so this thing my only negative about it again you can customize everything battle wear on it or pristine this specific model you need to like take the whole hilt apart to get to the charging dock that's my only negative in it so it is yeah it's officially dead now but it is full combat r- rated saber that if you and your nerd friends want to get out in the yard and go swing lightsabers at each other and get all the neighborhood kids to come out and watch you, which totally didn't happen in my backyard last it's, year, uh, it is totally possible to do that. Like 20 so. years ago, uh, there was a Star Wars convention in our area. And my, my brother is 10 years older than me. So he took me and I'm 36. So I was like 15 at the time. And they had high quality sabers with um a- acrylic blades and it was mm-hmm. that it was combat ready and yep. we used to like go in the backyard i'm 16 he's 26 and we would just beat the shit out of each other with these sabers and then i did the same thing uh a few years later my younger brother and i we went to the renaissance fair 
and they had these wooden swords that I don't think are in this room, so I can't pull them out, but like they're combat ready. The, the guy who sells them, he's like, if they ever break, bring them back, I'll give you a new one. Um, and we had these wooden swords and we would just beat the fucking crap out of each other. But with the tchotchkes, like I'm a big Mega Man guy. You can see I got the cut man really? there. I, really? My, I, I didn't notice. My Mega Man tattoo here <laughs> years ago. Like this is my my pride and joy. Um, Cody Koala, who's a, a toy customizer. Oh, he wow. had made this. It was probably two, three hundred dollars. But an ex-girlfriend bought this for me um, and had it customized for me from literally, I think I have the toy up here. So maybe it's in another room. I guess it's in another room, but like I have the original toy that it was made from. And, and, and like, yeah, when people buy me shit, I'm like, this is great, but I would never buy myself. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's strange. Like I, we we enjoy a lot of our travel trips um and going out and seeing places and similar we're at a point in our lives and i do feel bad for the generation behind us who are struggling to make rent or find a house they can afford i feel like my generation the the elder millennial is uh the last generation that actually really had a chance to get in front of the curve and then ride the wave forward and uh, I can guarantee you my house is perfectly fine for me and my wife and our dog. It is not worth the amount of money I could sell it for right now. Yeah. And and it is one of those things that like I, I'm generally pretty careful with, with how we spend, but when we go and do things, we do it right. And if yeah. if my wife wants a uh, trip down memory lane for something that brought her joy as a kid. We're going to do what we can to go get that thing, including having three devices waiting for an Etsy drop. That's going to happen. Refreshing rapidly clicking the refresh button because we're brings us joy. And what brings our generation joy is going to be much different than what our parents and our parents, parents generation found. I didn't intend to get this deep with you, I thought it would be like, <laughs> but that's the joy of tales off the holo tables is that you can get deep and go crazy with this kind of shit, yeah. but it's the same shit. Like, uh, my wife is a huge Taylor Swift fan, huge. And I like her music. Um, but she's huge. When the Eras tour came out, she sat there on her work computer, her personal computer, my personal computer, her phone, her iPad, trying to get tickets. Yeah. Right. And <laughs> And she spent her entire work day, and we did, we got face value tickets, but she spent her entire work day getting these tickets so that we, she could go enjoy this concert. Um, yeah. But but when we get to like the deepness of it is like, we're all gonna die. It's gonna happen. Yeah. I, I, I don't wanna discredit any religions. I don't know what happens. I've never died before. Um, so I don't know. But as far as I'm concerned, once I'm dead, I'm gone. Um, so when it comes to like in, enjoying what I'm doing right now is, is the most, there's no greater purpose. There's just enjoy what you're doing, leave the world a better place. Yep. And no one else can tell you what you should enjoy in your life. And that is probably the biggest thing that I think we struggle at is we hold everyone to these standards that you hold yourself to. But honestly, end of the day, you love Mega Man. That's great. That's absolutely great. It was a part of your childhood, part of your growing up. You probably have some core memories built around this thing. If it brings you joy and it doesn't jeopardize your ability to put food on the table and a roof over your head, enjoy what makes you happy. And so. Nobody is going to have the same exact levels of enjoyment from everything, but do do what brings you joy. And that is what is really going to, I think, kind of change how generations look at what they leave behind and what their legacy is. And, and this is way off topic at this point, uh, but um, I am now on glass two of this very lovely bourbon, and it is... It is fantastic. Good, right? Yeah, yeah, it's good. 
that that's the joy of tales you know is that we start on games and, and this is i still talk to sarah sometimes where we just talk about reality tv um and that's what i love it's just that you can go from the game and talk about whatever and 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 when it comes to content creators or not content creators just learning a little bit about other people that play the game um so it, it doesn't it doesn't matter um either way you know for for me Mega Man is that thing um it's the thing above Star Wars and it, it sucks that the Ooh, Mega Man that's, that's a bold that's a bold it's, statement it's, it's big I don't have a Star Wars tattoo I've got, oh. I've got Mega Man I've got Zelda I've got, got Borderlands um I, I don't have a Meg, uh, Star Wars one I thought about getting a Jar Jar one but I was like maybe that's a little bit too on the nose um yeah. <laughs> I was like maybe I'll regret that one <laughs> it yeah yeah uh, even then like that sort of thing i you love what you love right yes and and nobody should tell you that what you love is not what you love because the only person who knows is you yeah and that's and that's really the big thing um i'm sure uh this is actually where i work i i have a home office so uh, the number of people who blur their backgrounds because i'm you're sitting at your kitchen table because you had a sick kid and you have to work from home. We know you're at your kitchen table. Everyone knows that I like star Wars and also the Pittsburgh penguins who are not out of the playoffs yet. That's not happening. Uh, Sidney Crosby will will it into <laughs> existence at this point. Uh, that Jersey stays there all hockey season until they're no longer playing hockey. Unless I'm wearing it, it's on that hook back there, but it is, uh, it, it is so interesting to me just how many, people from different countries, different walks of life, different interests, different careers can all bond over something as quite honestly silly as a phone game. And I have built so many lasting friendships and relationships around this phone game and the community that it spawned that I talk to people in my guild and in Discord more than I talk to lifelong friends in real life. Because yeah. we have this thing in common. We've always had this ability. And it, it has come down to there's some people that when we go, one of our guildies is in Pittsburgh. And the next time I'm in Pittsburgh, we're probably going to try and skip a work meeting for dinner and go grab a beer with them so I can actually meet somebody in person. Uh, we, had a, a, we have a guild in our alliance from Vietnam. And... I want to say probably half, if not more, are all in Vietnam, and they had a meetup, and I think 12 or 15 of them all got together and just met in person one day. Where else are you going to have that outside of MMO clans where you're going to spend the money and fly to a city and go meet with people that you share this common bond and this common interest with? It just doesn't happen. Yeah, I mean, happen. we did that We did that recently. We had the Reddit meetup in, in the New Jersey, New York area. And there was like eight guys that we all hung at our brewery and we, and, and it was great. I bought everybody a beer and they were like, wait a second, what the hell? I'm supposed to buy you a beer. Um, but that's my toxic trait. That's fine. Um, and I would, and I said in that Reddit thread today, and I, I've said to people before, uh, if you're ever in this area, if you're ever in New Jersey or you're in New York, or you're in that area, hit me up. Like I'll, I'll buy you a beer. I'll come to a a brewery i love meeting people like it's yeah. it, it's fun to do you know and it's kind of cool like i know people all over the world i know you know captain amazing is in japan uh moonborn is in germany um i know uh merchant deer is in australia like all these these people that i'm like i have all these places that i can go i can have a beer i can have a pint if i ever go to these places like it'll be a lot of fun um, and I was just saying to my wife today, because she has her own Discord community for for Quinn, which is basically audio porn. I'm sure your wife listens to it, too. Um, uh, ask that her might, if she knows. That might be but, a conversation at the dinner table tonight when we're done. Know, ask her if she knows about Quinn. It's basically audio porn, and it's like audio porn for women. And um, it's it's very funny. I've never listened to any of it, but uh, Taylor Tomlinson did it like a bit, and I'm just moving my shit over here so I'm out of the sun. Yeah. Um, but she she did a whole bit on it, and and my wife does like TikTok videos for like counting shit. She basically does what I do, but for this 
this this community and i was saying to her like if any of your friends want to stay in our guest room like i'm cool with it just know that i'm yeah. okay with it like i'm i'm totally open to meeting people and it's not weird to me so yeah. don't be weird about it like invite them over like it's fine yeah the the number w my wife and i do a lot of travel um like we work, we both work very hard. So when we have the ability to get away from it all, uh, we're going on a trip next week. Um, and it just gives us that opportunity to kind of, for the most part, unplug from the phone. I'm still going to get my, if my guild leader is listening, I'm still going to get my 600s in. Don't worry. My platoons will be done. Uh, uh, everything will be fine. Uh, but it, it is a chance to get away and I'm planning a, a bigger trip to Italy this year and made mention of it to a couple of people in my guild and like, Hey, I live in the area. I travel there all the time or, Hey, I studied abroad. These are the places that we went and, you know, you're going to be surrounded by tourists if you go here, but go over here. This is where you're going to get this experience. And I'm taking notes. I'm taking notes on everything. We're building our our plan out for that trip because I want to see what I don't want to see what everybody else that travels to Rome wants to go and do and take the same photograph that everyone else has. I want to go and experience a culture and experience what what every weird place in the world has to offer that's different than where I live. Because yes. I love where I live, but there's so many places in this world that have unique experiences and unique ways of doing life. And, and it's not yes, something yes. that you can just assume that your experience is the same and you want to go somewhere else and expect them to speak English and cater to your desire for cheeseburger and fries. Like when you're in Italy eat like an Italian, like experience the culture, be respectful of the culture, learn, and then take that home and then apply that to your next trip. Go somewhere new. And that's, I, uh, I think you and I need to plan a trip now because sounds good. Uh, that, sounds I'm good. Down for it. Um, because I've always, 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 I, I haven't traveled internationally often. I've been to DR Dominican Republic a few times um i've been to puerto rico which is not technically international but I mean, you, you gotta no. get your you gotta get your rum right it's that's your rum. where it's i got rum. what is it? it's the trigo reserva aniha i don't know what that means because i don't speak spanish i had awful spanish teachers but it's a beautiful rum uh, i'm a big fan um and and I, like i went to south korea recent recently nice but anytime i've, I've traveled I'm always about like finding like the local dive bars or like the local culture areas. And my wife has gotten mad at me a few times because she talks about going to like Paris or France. Well, Paris is France, but yeah, or London. And, but she wants to go to like the Leaning Tower of Pisa or she wants to go to the Eiffel Tower. And in my head, I'm like, I don't care about those things. Um, I want to know how those people eat. I want to know how those people talk. I want to know where those people go. Um, I want to experience the culture of the area, not where everybody that looks like me is going to be um, hanging out to take, again, the same like Leaning Tower of Pisa picture that looks like Hold this, right? Yep. Um, and that's what we did in South Korea. We went to a bunch of places that my older brother took us to. Um, and then when he left, we were like, let's just explore. Let's like just hang out. Let's Let's walk around and get lost in a place where we don't know the language and have fun with it. We, uh, when we got married, um, our one year anniversary, honey, we delayed our trip just due to many reasons, okay. but, uh, no, no, we've been married. Gosh, I should know this off the top of my head. Uh, it'll be 12 <laughs> years, 12 years this year. She won't listen to this. So it's fine. No, she definitely will not listen to this. <laughs> so she's like, you're having fun. Go, I'm going to teach class. We'll be fine. Uh, but we did a Northern France tour and we were by far the youngest couple on this entire tour a bunch of retirees and a bus tour around northern france we went to different places that we would probably not have gone had the tour not taken us there we went to rouen where uh joan of arc was burned and we found a little belgian beer bar and like yeah you all go you grandparents you all go to that church 
we're going to go to this delirium tremens bar and go drink some delicious fresh belgian beer and found a couple of people on that trip who were like yeah churches are great we got churches at home let's go we saw it we looked at it let's let's grab a beer and that was our group the delirium six we went every place we went we pointed out like that's the bar we're going to my only problem in france that i had anywhere was hey we have 35 minutes we want a round of beer and some appetizers and then we have to get back on the bus that was the only area that we ever had a cultural misunderstanding of it's lunchtime it's a two-hour affair like you should relax like the midday lunch is the biggest meal in france and we didn't know that because like we have like bus leaves in 35 minutes we want a beer we want wine there we, we want to go on our way and that was the only time i ever had a problem in in all of france that we were in because we had an agenda we had to get on the bus we had to go this place and that was really interesting to me to just see how different cultures interact with food interact with their time what brings them joy and that really is something that i think this world is so big and so broad but also so uniquely close that we can experience other things beyond what we have where we live and i I'm very much into this bourbon at this point. We're we're going <laughs> way further than talking about a phone Star Wars game. But that's that's again that's the beauty of of, of tales off the hollow tables. Um, you know that that brings me back to like I was just thinking about my trip when we we got married uh, right before COVID. Um, so 2019, uh, mm. which is disappointing because we both wanted a smaller wedding, but we didn't want to disappoint people. If we had just waited one year, we could have had a you had much the smaller perfect, wedding. The perfect out. It the would have perfect been out. Great, but we had to postpone our honeymoon as well um, for the same reason. And we ended up going to Colorado, which is beautiful. Absolutely. Um, and we both love Denver. And if I didn't have my business, we would, I think both of us would have moved to Denver. We, we love it there. Um, we were perpetually high. Um, for anyone who's been there, we basically, we got a bunch of drugs and when we sectioned the, all the gummies into quarters and we would take one quarter every hour. So we kind of get like this rise and like this thing going on throughout the day. Um, but when we were there and we went to this one distillery, um, I don't, I don't know, even know why, I don't know why this is tangibly related. We went to this one distillery there and I, and I got a free, a free tour as an educator. Um, and I remember going on it and getting a bunch of whiskey and I remember going to the back room and they, and they gave us a bunch more whiskey. And right after the guy poured my whiskey, I, I drank it and everyone else around me didn't, um, and the guy started talking about the whiskey is like, oh, if you like swirl it around and you like notice the notes and I'm like, I'm done. I don't know. What to t- <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I finished. You didn't you didn't tell me beforehand I was supposed to save this. You just poured me alcohol after I had three drinks in your bar. I don't I don't know. Yeah, I don't know where the story is going, but it was a great time. <laughs> that, that, that's it. It was, it was a wonderful time. Big fan of Denver. Yeah, Denver. Uh, I I currently live in Ohio um, for 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 my work as well, and it's we still haven't, even though the citizens you un, not unanimously obviously, but the citizens spoke. We voted to legalize recreational marijuana. It is still not yet possible in Ohio, and there's talk that the first recreational location is going to be open in within like a month they're finally ready and we voted like six months ago to legalize it it is something that just even from the location everyone who wants it can get it anyway most people drive to michigan at this point where it's also legal to buy it without a medical card but even then there's billboards on the side of the street like call this number we'll get you a medical card in in 24 in hours 10 minutes, it's, yeah. it's not that hard um unfortunately my job i still have federal mandates so yeah um which just personally um 
I have been very, very drunk in my life and have been Same. in way, way worse shape than anyone that I know that has been high. Um, and that is perfectly okay to sit here on a Sunday drinking this and go to work tomorrow morning. Yet, if I get randomly called on Monday morning, because we have federal contracts and we have to abide by the federal law, even though what, 29 states are legal now? Some, something like that, yeah. Like over half the country is legal and realizing this should not be a, a what class one, stage one level drug on the the level of cocaine and other drugs like high-end drugs that actually create that like lasting Problems. impact you it, it makes no sense for this to be a thing and the day that the federal government releases marijuana friday night we're gonna do another one of these videos and it'll be my wow. first experience my man fly out here uh i obviously flying there and back like you'll have to deal with that kind of shit but once that happens fly out of here i have a guest room you could stay in there it's great it's fun uh i'm not somebody that sits there going like this constantly uh i actually can't smoke with asthma and all that stuff i have a trouble I with hear. it I, hear. I take the gummies uh whenever i can but like once every two weeks um it's just like a fun for me. I'm not a big sleeper. I have trouble sleeping, so it helps me go to sleep, and and it's just fun to relax sometimes. Yeah, and 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 it does go back to your point. Like I, I understand the idea of like I would never drive with it. I would never like do something with it. But I'm alone at home. I'm like, man, this just relaxes me, and I don't have to deal with anything. And like, who cares? I'm gonna order extra DoorDash and extra French fries and maybe an extra ice cream, like doesn't it it doesn't matter um but that again goes back to the beauty of what tales off the hollow tables is is we go from talking about the raid and talking about rise of the empire and talking about uh jar jar and and how he's going to impact the game and then we go into um traveling and we go into drugs um so that's 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 where things go from here and this is um, where I find out that some of my VPs play Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes on our Monday morning <laughs> call tomorrow morning. And this is going to be a whole thing. Uh, no, no. It, it's, it is one of those things that like this community is so great. It really is. We have so many people that really just have so much unique life experience that it is a, it is wonderful to be able to talk to some people who have – different interests and like interests and learn a little bit more. And every community that I've been a part of has been just so welcoming to all different people because we all have that one core aspect that we all love star Wars. We, we like, you wouldn't play a game like this if you didn't have a fundamental love for star Wars. And the fact that you, for whatever reason, love Gungans as much as you do, <laughs> is awesome and it's great for you and it's it's something that we can support as a community and not just be so negative everything feels so mean and negative nowadays we have so many great things to be thankful for that you can you can celebrate that someone else loves something that you don't and not feel the need that they need to like what you yeah what yeah. you like like we really have this great ability now especially with how connected we are i mean we're you're in jersey i'm in ohio we're seven hours away that's not that far let's go Com let's... compare 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 to others but like <laughs> it, it is it is one of those things that we just we have a unique combined interest and then it just breathes to so many other things. Yeah. But I go ahead. It's, I was going to say that sounds like a perfect ending point. It seems you wrapped up this entire thing. And normally I give people their last thoughts on camera. Um, and, and usually what happens is I, I give people last thoughts and then I end up spending the next 45 <laughs> minutes talking to them off camera. Uh, so what I did want to say is 
I am I am on the the track to get uh, Jar Jar Day One. It seems like it's going to happen. I don't want to say it's going to happen free to play, but I do want to say that I have sectioned off my crystals and I have meticulously tracked it. And I if I didn't spend the fifty dollars because my guild leader made me, um, I still would have gotten Jar Jar regardless of that fifty dollars. Yeah. So that is going to happen soon. That is going to happen soon, regardless. But after that, before we finish, I want to give you that last thought. Uh, and and really, so back to game, focus on game. Uh, because I really want to just talk about whiskey for my last thought, but that that's a whole different that's a whole different podcast at this point. Talk the game, talk about the whiskey. <laughs> but uh, with this, um, your guild. In, in the game in the guild that you're in um wow we should be in the tipsy gungan at this point in your in your discord i'm gonna i'm gonna segue here i love the way you're approaching your discord channel i love the things that you have posted in here i love that you're taking creator content giving them a voice for the the smaller ones not the ones that are the loudest but the ones that are actually giving good value to this community the 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 tb section and this is really where my my passion is and my heart is in this game there is a great section of content available to people that at least for the videos that i've recorded there's no dialogue you don't have to listen to this talk anymore mine either you 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 get to the you get to the details you get to the teams that work to help you progress further in the game at the end of the day we all want to be the strongest we can be unless we're enemies in in galactic uh, gac we want everyone to succeed and enjoy this game in their own way however that is for you if it's going hard on gungans nobody's going to judge you except me a little bit with you after we hang up this call but it is it is it is one of these things that we have such a great community that if we all can work together and be just a little bit more positive, just Reddit, if you're on here, just be a little bit more positive. Realize that you have content creators and guildmates and people of like mind who all want to see this thing that we gain enjoyment of, free to play whales kraken spenders we all come to the same conclusion that we want to enjoy this thing have fun enjoy your star wars and may the force be with you that's a perfect ending point so i'm not going to waste it by saying anything other than this <laughs>